Um, so thank you all again for being here. Um, we have special guest, Freddie Rivera, here for the Career Open Forum. And so Freddie, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Freddie Rivera, uh, class of, I forget at this point, uh, but I think it was 2009. Um, as Alexis mentioned, I'm a Management and Human Resources major, or MHR. Um, I worked full time during college, like all the time. Um, you know, first generation American. My parents are immigrants, uh, Nicaraguense and Peruvian. Uh, I went to Balm Park High, so if you guys are familiar with the area. Uh, I went to Mount Sac, then I transferred into uh, Cal Poly Pomona. Uh, I worked for various companies, but right now I'm working at Oracle as a diversity program manager um, in recruiting, and that's where I started my job, uh, my career. I started in recruiting, and then I transitioned into like other companies, other companies, and then most recently, the last three, four years, I'm doing diversity. So really excited to be here with you guys. You know, hope this is helpful and, you know, looking forward to your questions and seeing how like I can give back to, to the Bronco community basically. Awesome, thank you so, so much, Freddie. Okay, and now we're gonna go around and we're going to introduce ourselves and pausing the All right, so thank you again, we're restarting. And so Freddie, um, uh, you're hearing, you know, a range of different career concerns from our participants. Um, it's everything from, you know, I'm, I'm just starting at Cal Poly Pomona and just kind of want to hear some insight from an alum all the way to, I graduated a few years ago, want to move up, maybe like move into, from management into a technical um, skill, or I'm an international student. What can I do to leverage um, my, my value and show that to employers? And so all of these sort of different things. So I think, um, just to kind of try to encompass all of that, as an experienced professional who's moved around at a lot of these really, really big, like Fortune 500 type companies, um, what kind of advice do you have for entry level professionals, uh, especially in times like this? Um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things, right? So I'm just trying to like sort through it all. But I, I think the biggest thing, and obviously it's a challenge right now, but you know, whether you're uh, just transferred in, you're a freshman, junior, senior, uh, I'd probably recommend the same thing. Uh, you know, build your network. Uh, obviously, if you're graduated looking for a job, this kind of doesn't apply to you, but I would say it does. You know, you have LinkedIn. Uh, I know that was a question you sent me, like, is that important? Mm -hmm. uh, I remember being in the cave and signing up for LinkedIn. And just to kind of give you guys an example, I haven't applied for a job like officially in like six, seven years because I just, you know, have people in my network that are like, Hey Fred, would you be interested in this or this or that or the other? Or I have like former classmates that are like, Hey, we're looking for X, you know, do you know anybody? Yeah, me. Or I like forward it on to like other classmates or friends or what have you. Um, so that's a big thing. The biggest things I could also recommend is like, really really know how to interview like star method behavioral interviews i would go into the career center um like constantly by the time i graduated from cal poly i think i had like 107 versions of my resume so i kept on refining kept on refining uh tom was there sherry peters was there amongst another like a lot of different people um so i would say definitely do that and then obviously you know once this kind of covid thing is you know hopefully everyone's safe and their families are safe and you know shout out to all the you know first responders and all that you know thoughts and you know go, go out to those folks but you know once you right now like for example someone said hey i'd like to work at edison and you know potentially would like to work there somebody in the chat said hey connect me with this person so again it's the power of networking right like you someone works at edison you want to work at edison I, I was even like, hey, let me connect this person with somebody, but they kind of took it already upon themselves. So that, that is an immediate example of power of networking. And you guys have access to LinkedIn. So if you're a computer science major, I heard that a couple of times. If you're somebody who has like, you know, you, you need to have like, a, you're an F1 student or need OPT, CPT, depending on your circumstances, you can always reach out to professionals, whether they graduated from Cal Poly or they work at, you know, someone mentioned like Google, Facebook, Microsoft, this is like the big three in uh, software, uh, Oracle. You guys can always, always reach out to these professionals and you'd be surprised how much professionals or just people in general like to talk about themselves, about their work, and then they like to help other people, right? 
like, hey, you look like a good guy, you look like a good person. Like, yeah, this is a great call. Like, let me forward it on to Bill who's in internships or whatever. Um, so never be afraid to like reach out because the worst thing that'll happen is they say no or you don't get a reply. And the best thing that could happen is they say yes. And then you get like a 30 minute phone call. And then again, addressing whether it's, I'm looking for an internship in software. You know, what are these, you know, you, these are the classes I've taken. Okay, cool. You might want to take Python. You might want to take this other stuff that you can learn on the side or somebody mentioned like electrical engineering. Cool. Are you taking the proper classes? You know, if you're going into power, do you have the power classes like on your schedule, whether it's this semester, next semester, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, just speaking to Edison, cause I work there, they're right across the street. So if you message somebody that says I work in Pomona, your chances of, again, obviously when this kind of blows over, but, you can just zoom them right now. You can, you know, ask them out for coffee in the future when, you know, this we're back to normal, but I'll kind of end there. And none of these are silver bullets by any means, but I, I'll just end on this. It does take a lot of work. And I know some of you are frustrated given the current situation and processes paused by a number of companies, but you know, you got to keep on plugging. You know, I got my first internship through Pyra evening with industry. Um, I literally spoke to somebody that was on the interview panel. She didn't tell me the interview questions, but she just said, look, just no star method, no whatever, whatever. And then the next day was my interview. And it just like, it was so easy. But again, it was the power of networking, the power of like, you know, connecting with individuals, asking the right questions, stuff like that. All in there just because, you know, to move on to whatever we got else. Yeah, thank you so much. And I mean, you don't necessarily have to move on. I think that that's such golden advice and it's something that we talk about a lot if any of you, I know some of you have met with me one-on-one -on -one and I talk over and over and over again about how important LinkedIn is, especially now when remote networking is the thing that we're able to do. So, you know, personally for me, um, going to networking events and things like that, I think it's great, but it's not necessarily where I shine the best um, as an introvert. It's just, it's just not necessarily my best self. So being able to, yeah. Sorry, yeah. go ahead. No, no, no. I, I don't want to interrupt you. You're on a really good point. I just wanted to add to that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no, absolutely. So, um, so uh, when I go through LinkedIn, I can specifically look at, um, like, for example, I think it was Romina who said, you know, I looked at your profile, Freddie, and I was really impressed with X, Y, and Z. And that is a lot, you know, closer to what's true of myself is that I can look at somebody's journey on LinkedIn See what we have in common and then specifically reach out to them about you know what impressed me um, why I resonate with their story and that feels way more authentic to me personally than when I'm at a networking event not that networking events are bad they're really really great um, it's just that for me personally in my style and how I interact with other people I find that to be a really effective way actually so even though we're in this remote environment I think we have the opportunity to get better at that kind of engagement and go ahead Freddie uh, no, I just was going to say, um, I am not, I'm an, I'm more of an introvert. Um, but I, you know, force myself to go to the career center to go to like evening with industry. I don't like, I, you know, just, I'm being super candid with you guys. I don't like chit chat, like, Oh, Hey, uh, uh, the whole thing. Like, you know, I, I don't like that, but unfortunately, like that's kind of part of it, right? Like you build relationships and networking and things like that. And you got to hustle like to be just, you know, you got to hustle. Like I would have my resume on me. If I bumped in a recruiter on campus, give it to them, flash drive, email, you know, whatever. Um, you know, I had a number of individuals that, you know, I, I kind of call them coaches. Like I want to work here. I want to work here. I want to, you know, this potential job. And I just asked them like, Hey, you know, what's your job about? And then, you know, at a certain point you're going to be like, I want to do this job or I don't want to do this job, but I'd rather figure that out before, you know, you end up in the career or what have you. But to Alexis's point, like, you know, LinkedIn is very important. It's where recruiters go to, that's their go-to, like 100%, you know, and I speak from being a recruiter myself in the past. Um, so when you guys, when somebody asks, like, is it important? Very important. Um, not only like if you're a student, but as a professional in the future, for sure, 100%. Great. Right. Thank you so much, Freddie. So, I mean, just maybe some tips from your side. Um, I know you reached out to me on LinkedIn and, and we connected right away. Yeah. Do you have advice for how, you know, the students and alum in the, in this chat 
can reach out intentionally and effectively to people at companies? Yeah, I mean, just, you know, I, I would really work on a really solid, like, just introductory note, like, you know, for example, if I'm writing this to myself, right, like, um, I put something in a subject, like, you know, seeking career advice or something to kind of grab attention. And then from there, you know, you would put something like, hi, Freddie, you know, I, I you know, kind of to what Romina said, like, hey, I looked at your profile, I see that you're a, a Bronco, and you've worked at some really interesting companies. Currently, right now, I am a major, you know, whatever, I'm graduating X, and I'd really love to, you know, your schedule permitting, if we can, you know, chat over Zoom or phone call, whatever is most convenient for 30 minutes, and discuss, like, how did you get to your position? You know, what are the things that I, I'm doing right now and can do, you know, to kind of close the gap to get that job? And, you know, just to kind of get some coaching advice, something as simple as that. Um, obviously, like refine it to like your style, your needs or whatever it is you're looking for. But you'd be surprised, like how many people reply back. I've had like, I've even done it where <laughs> I used to reach out to like directors, VPs, and they would reply back. They're like, wow, you know, this is, uh, this is new. This is interesting. And then, you know, I'm sitting down with, over phone or video with like somebody from these huge companies. None of the ones that I ended up working at, unfortunately, but, um, you know, so the worst that can happen is they don't reply or they say no. I mean, you don't, you haven't lost anything. You haven't paid anything. You spent some time writing a note and then you're just kind of like shooting it off. And obviously don't shoot it off to everybody. It has to make sense. It has to be like, Hey, Freddie, like I'm looking to be a submarine driver. Like what, I don't have anything to do with that, you know, and I'm exaggerating, but a hundred percent. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's so helpful. And so truly catering your message to tailoring it. I think that nobody really likes to see a form letter, right? Especially if you're reaching out to high level leadership in these different companies. So truly take a look at their LinkedIn profile, look at their story, see how it resonates with you and reach out about something specific. Um, that would be a really good strategy. And you can find a lot of these emails through the company websites. You can find their emails um, through certain software online, certain websites will help you find that or LinkedIn. Right. Um, and that's something I'm happy to help with. I say it a lot, but if you want to schedule an appointment with me or email me, I'm happy to take a look at your LinkedIn too, and we can talk about some of the critical pieces that you need. Okay. Thank you so much. So great advice. It's an experienced professional. You've heard it here. Networking is the thing. Remote networking is also good. Um, and so Freddie, as someone who was in recruitment for a number of years now in diversity, you know, you've, you've moved around quite a bit. Um, what advice do you have for the folks here about navigating the job and internship search right now? I mean, obviously networking is a really critical piece, but just let's say they're, they've done some networking, they're ready to apply. What do you see going on in industry right now? What can they expect? Yeah. And I, I'm looking at the chat and there are, and somebody mentioned it earlier, like there are companies who have paused hiring or, you know, you're not getting as much communication or what have you. Um, I, I, and I tell this to people all the time, inter student, professional, like really seasoned professional, whatever, like you, you, the first thing for me is like, you got to stay optimistic. You got to stay positive, right? Like we're not going to be in this situation for years, hopefully. Right. Like, you know, knock, knock on wood, but, um, you know, take the time to right now, like there's a lot of free material. So like learn those skills and I'll give you guys an example, right? Like I used to recruit for Edison. I used to recruit for a lot of interns at Cal Poly, um, a ton, like a ton, because I was going to school there. I came from the school, so it was a really natural transition. But I think what I would like say to certain folks, because we already talked about LinkedIn, interviewing, like resume needs to be very solid. Um, you need to know like those basic questions that companies or industries are asking for. And I'll give you an example. So if I was recruiting for like double E interns, I would ask something along the lines of um, explain to me a, you know, a power system and how it works from, you know, all the steps to, you know, generating power all the way to the, you know, your house, you know, give me those steps. And there was a lot of folks who couldn't answer that. And we weren't looking like overly technical. It was just like, you know, from transmission to distribution step down to a substation and then down to the end customer. 
something as simple as that with, you know, just very brief stuff, we were like, okay, this person understands basic power concepts. They've taken the requisite classes. Like let's continue the conversation. So that goes for anything like that. Like, for example, I see a couple computer science individuals or folks on the phone who are interested in that. Like, what are those basic coding challenges and tests that you need to kind of be really, really good at? Like someone mentioned Google, Facebook, Microsoft, you know, large companies like that. There's a plethora of books that literally talk about the tests, the coding tests that those companies have. So, and it kind of goes to another point that I was going to bring up later, but you know, you guys are in school, you guys are learning or a professional and you're doing your job or you're looking for a position, but you know, you have to ask people who are in the job already, like, what are the, what did you do to get there? And what are those skills that not necessarily taught in class or part of the curriculum that you need to learn to be able to get that interview, that coding test, that, that call back, that email back because um, you know, it's not just a matter of right now, it's so competitive from the market and hiring and everything that, okay, cool, like just to use example again, you're a Cal Poly Pomona electrical engineering graduate or in, you're looking for an internship, fantastic, but you know, what makes you stand out from other individuals? Do you know how to do Python? Do you understand, have you taken other like, um, like core classes that are not in your curriculum? You know, stuff like that. Um, you have to have to like be able to do that. And what I've seen from certain like CS intern, like people who want an internship or people who want like a new grad position, um, especially in that field, like to have like a, whether it's like a coding repository, even if it's just your own work, even if it's from class, um, this is a good time, especially right now to like build your own website. LinkedIn in a way is your own website, but if you can build a website, whether it's through like a certain service, it's like a hundred bucks, 50 bucks, whatever it is for hosting and the server. But if you can showcase like, Hey, this is my work. Here's how I did it. Here's like my role. And then, you know, from beginning, this is the prompt. And then from end, this is a result. And then, you know, we exceeded that result or whatever. Um, so, you know, that I would really, really recommend that because whenever I saw a resume, double E CS, business, what have you. Um, I mean, you guys are doing some really interesting and cool things. And if it's something that you can visualize and put on your resume and say, this is my website, like that goes like really a long way. And again, it could be engineering. It could be CS. It could be IBM. I heard somebody talk about IBM. CIS and CS are definitely represented here. Um, you know, or whatever it might, might be, whether it's like a fun project, and sometimes that fun project translates into something that the business needs or they're looking for. And I have certainly hired a number of individuals that, you know, took it upon themselves to do this stuff, you know, on their extra time, spare time. And again, it depends on you and the spare time that you have with everything going on with school, personal, you know, just trying to relax. Um, but I would say those are some things that kind of you stick out. And another thing is just, you know, you have to learn how to like communicate concisely and present yourself in a way that's like, Oh wow. Like, you know, I gotta, I gotta like give this person my undivided attention because you know, they researched my company. They looked at my LinkedIn. They know I went to Cal Poly. They know I worked at Edison. Um, they're also a fan of Batman. They, you know, all these things makes you remember that person. So for example, the person who's in IBM, like myself as a student, I would, I, I was working like 50, 55, 60 hour weeks sometimes. And I would try, and I wouldn't do it all the time, but I would try my best to go to other organizations on campus like Nesby Ship SWE. I'm not an engineer, but I would go there because the companies were there. So I guess what my point is, if you've seen people come on campus, especially right now, you have to flex to that. So figure out who those people are, figure out, you know, what they're looking for. And then, you know, be proactive and like reach out if possible, if you can figure it out. And, you know, you got to like, it's not just about getting the degree, like that's great. And that's part of it, right? But the degree is what opens the doors to get, you know, to make your resume, you make your resume, it's kind of like, oh, wow, this looks interesting. And if it's a good resume and good experience, then it'll translate into an interview. And again, you have to learn how to interview, interview well. And then from there is when you get, you know, internship, offer for full time, whatever that might be, right? So for sure. Awesome. Thank you so much, Freddie. And, and 
I love what someone mentioned earlier that they said really specifically, my goal is to work at SBE. I think when you know what you want and you ask exactly. for it actively, then you know the universe is way more likely to have people listen to you and then connect you with the folks that, that matter for that to happen. So I think that's, yeah. that's fantastic, being able to actually articulate what you truly want. And one thing I'll add, like, you know, people, folks like Alexis or Tom or Sherry or anybody in the Career Center, like, they interact with people like me when I was in that role. So these guys know exactly, or they have a good sense, what Edison's looking for and, you know, the various other companies, you know what I mean? So they can kind of point you in the, that direction. So that's why, you know, I always went to the Career Center a lot, uh, just because in my mind, you know, kind of to what someone's point was, they want to work at Edison. I was like, I thought of it, I thought of it a little bit differently. I was like, okay, I'm coming to school, I'm paying all this money, I'm, you know, I'm doing all these tests, I'm studying, but what, what's it all for? And what it all, what it was for was to get a job, right? So I'm doing my tests, I'm taking my MHR core, I'm doing, you know, IBM classes, CIS class, you know, all this stuff. But in the back of my mind, I was like, I got to know how to write a resume, I got to know how to interview, know how to network. I have to, like, these are the things that are missing. So you have to kind of take inventory of what's missing or what you can work on now as a student. So when you get out of school, you know, these things kind of come naturally. And again, still to this day, I'm not the best networker. If I'm not feeling it, I'll just kind of stand in the corner, you know, and I know some people are more introverted than extroverted, but at a certain, even introverts can network and they can do their thing. Um, obviously, I'm not going to be like, woo, yeah, nice to meet you. That's just not me. You know, that, that like takes a lot of energy out of me. So you have to like, obviously keep on track to, you know, get your degree and everything, but you have to kind of think about like, okay, cool. Like you get the degree, but you're getting the degree to open up doors to get you a job. But there are steps to get to that job, which is like, you know, resume, interviewing, networking, being able to like speak and understand like the industry itself, doing your research on the company and the values, what's going on in industry and speak to that when you're networking with somebody over Zoom, over the phone, you know, in an interview, whatever it might be. Right. So and I'll just kind of add this. I know that there's a ton of virtual events, not a ton, but I know there's several virtual events, whether it's a company. Um, whether it's like local organizations. Um, so I would kind of like do some Google searching, whether it's Eventbrite, whether it's on Facebook, whatever. There's a number of organizations that are still kind of hiring. There's a number of organizations that, you know, can connect you with different organizations, different companies, different opportunities. So that's also something to consider as well. Thank you so much, Freddie. So I think that we've answered the final question that I had prepared, which is professional development in a remote environment. It's truly exactly as you said, taking stock of what you're really good at now, what you could work on, and then knowing that there are tools to help you. You know, you have access to LinkedIn Learning for free as a Cal Poly Pomona student. edX is free. Coursera, um, for the most part, is free. Um, obviously, you have access to career specialists. There's eight of us, one for every college. So if you want even more industry-specific advice, we're happy to help you, alum as well. You can make appointments with us too. So, um, so let's move over to some of the questions that we had earlier. So Romina had asked about contract work. Um, so if you wouldn't mind sharing your insight on, on moving from contract work to more of, I think, non-contract work, I think was the question. Yeah, yeah um, it's a great question. I think it's something that definitely needs to be addressed. And just for everyone's benefit, or just to kind of define it, if you're not familiar with it, um, a contract worker is, and again, I'm, I'm at a high level, right? Very simplistically, it's like uh, you're working at this company, but you're not a full-time employee. So you don't get like benefits, vacation, stuff like that. And typically it's an opportunity for a company like to fill a gap for a certain amount of period of time or to basically try before you buy. So for example, I was a contractor at Google. Uh, I actually left Edison which is a full-time job, great company, you know, everything's cool and went to a contract job at Google because, you know, sometimes you just have to kind of bet on yourself, um, take a contract to get that company on your resume, um, to just get the experience. I had worked at Edison my whole like career up until then, which is a utility company. So when I went to Google and people would ask me where I came from, they were like, just kind of, you know, really caught off guard because normally people are like Microsoft, Facebook, you know, that kind of, that kind of company, not, not, uh, that. So transitioning from contract to full time, 
I think for me, I think you need to ask a lot of questions like on the front end, like, hey, you know, what is the what is the policy or possible probability of converting from contract to full time? What does it take to get from contract to full time? Are there any individuals currently working there that made that transition and then obviously connect with them and get their take? Um, but at the same time, like things change, right? Things change all the time. Like, for example, the situation we're in right now. So even though you're on a contract, obviously, like, you know, do your best and everything. But, you know, you have to be in constant communication with your manager, your management team, however that's set up and kind of always. And obviously, you have to find a good cadence, but, you know, kind of bring it up in conversation, you know, just because just because you think your manager like remembers everything you're telling them, like, Hey, I did this, I did this, I did, you know, but they also have other people that they're managing, whether they're full time or contract. So you kind of have to keep it on the top of their mind in a respectful way in like kind of walking the fine line of reminding them, but not being annoying. Cause that's also a possibility. Right. And obviously don't do it on your first day. Cause you know, that's just not going to come off well. Like do it respectfully, like at the, like a certain checkpoint, like three, six, nine months, whatever makes sense. Um, but also put yourself in a position where you're doing like impactful work. You've improved processes. You've, you know, made connections with like the leader or, you know, they know your name, they are aware of your work, stuff like that. Because how, and again, at a high level contract to full time usually is like, there's usually a process and that process, you know, simplistically tends to be, you know, you have your immediate supervisor, they're involved in that process. And then it's like maybe two of their peers. So now you have three people reviewing your work and everything you've contributed during your contract, whatever it might be. And then on top of that, there's a leader and another leader or something like that. Right. So if the only person, you know, in that chain is your boss and they're fighting for you, that's great. But then as it goes to the other levels, they're either going to say, I don't know this person or like, sure, or no. So again, networking kind of comes still into play in the professional and in, and, and in industry. Um, but, you know, that's kind of like my thought process about that. Um, Romina, if you want, I know we connected on LinkedIn, you know, feel free to email me if you have more questions. But, uh, you know, I think that's a good starting point for sure. Thank you so much, Freddie. Um, Thank you so much. George had asked about moving from management to a more technical specialization. So sort of, I guess, being a career changer. Uh, do you have any advice about that? Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's a, that, it's a very like intricate, like very like unique situation. It hap it's very common though. I would say, you know, not knowing all the parameters and specifics, you know, I would say that's not a bad thing to be, to be very candid. I think right now it's a matter of, you know, if people manage it, it's not for you, not your bag, or you just like, are want to be more hands on like coding or whatever it might be. Um, I think it's just kind of communicating that to your leadership team, your manager, and, you know, kind of communicating why, and then showcasing the benefit of, Hey, if I can transition into this type of role, like just for the sake of example, uh, into this principle of, I don't know, database architecture, I'm just making something up. I think I can like really make some impact. So I think packaging it, packaging it up in a way that's like, Hey, this is what I would like to do, but this is what, how it would benefit you. Right. Cause if you just say, Hey, I want to go to an IC role, then, you know, there's no benefit to me as an employer. Cause it's, it's always about, you know, what's in it for me. Uh, as an employee, as a manager or anyone like that, I'd be like, okay, like, you know, I think you're doing great or I feel like you're doing great, but you know, if you feel that this would fulfill and leverage your skill set a lot more then you would be able to, you know, knock these projects out that I need done as a, and as a team, if you present it that way, I feel like it's something that would be like, Oh, you know, actually this is good for me too. So that kind of just sweetens the pot a little bit. So, uh, obviously like there's a lot of intricacies and like, you know, conversations that go into that, but I would say, you know, and I, lastly, I would just say like, be very, very sure. That's what you want to do. If you're very sure, then, you know, kind of like blaze the path forward, but, you know, be very sure that that's what you want to do. Cause it doesn't look great when, you know, you're a manager, you transition to IC and then you go back to being a manager because you, you know, so just be very, very certain that that's something that you'd like to do, but it's certainly very common, like a hundred percent. Some people just don't, you know, dig being a people manager or they just really like being like 
you know, rolled sleeves and in the coding and the repository, you know, talking architecture with like designers, TPMs, product managers, et cetera, et cetera. So, but, you know, at a high level that I, I think that's kind of the best thing I could kind of say. Yeah, that's great. And, and we have sort of the opposite question in a way um, from Hike. I'm so sorry. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, but um, recent graduate oh, yes, with a BS. You got it. Is my mic working? Yes, it is. It is. Oh, okay, okay, wonderful. Uh, yes, you got it. It's it's Hike. Thank you. Okay, hi. Thank you. So, recent graduate, BS mechanical engineering, minor in business management, wanted to know how to start a career um, and the best way to move up to management. So, truly, kind of the, the opposite situation, wanting starting in a very technical sort of situation, you know, technical skills, and then moving into management. Um, yeah. Goals are eventually to get an MBA. Oh, nice. Okay. All right. You know what you're doing. Okay. Yeah, we have to be hopeful, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I see you. I said, no, I think that's a great plan. I think that's a great plan. Like 100% having the technical and then the business sense and then getting a business school like degree 100%. I, mm -hmm. you know, would agree with that. Um, how do you get to being a manager? Um, what what uh, year are you hike? Well, I'm actually a, a recent graduate. So last okay. semester, I um like just graduated and, and perfect timing. I know as soon as I graduate and start looking for a job, boom, you know, all this happens and every company starts downsizing. And I feel kind of like a wall just, you know, smacked me. So no, for sure. And rightly so. Right. But I'll give you guys a, uh, I guess an example. I was kind of in that bubble, but not really. So I, like I said, I've graduated 2009. We had that huge recession in 2008. So, you know, if, if, if that can be navigated by me, certainly like you guys were very smart and capable can like figure that out and like I mentioned before like you know you have to stay positive because if you're negative and you know and I'm not saying hike is or anyone is but it's just very very key like it's not gonna if it's not gonna help you then why do it like why you know be upset or like negative just you know keep on plugging away find out like who you can like interact with but back to hikes question so how do you get to being a manager and it depends on the company, it depends on the culture, it depends on your field, right? But I would say first things first is mastering the position that you end up getting first, right? So hike, if you're like a, you know, I don't know, um, a mechanical, just just call it an engineer one, like using Edison terminology, right? Because I can't think of anything right now. Um, but if you're an engineer one in like an apparatus group that does like standards for the various substations, right? Then your first like mode of business is obviously learning the company, learning the values, learning the culture, and figuring out who the players are. Like, okay, this manager is in really good with this other person, and you know, I need to kind of get to know them because if you figure out what that process is of like, for example, at Edison, you gotta write something, normally at a company, you have to do like a write-up of here's my work for the year, here's what I'm working on, et cetera, et cetera, right? So, that should be a time for you to kind of shine and put all your accomplishments. And basically what I'm trying to get at is your first job at a college, you got to just focus on learning the company and all that stuff I mentioned, but you got to really, really learn your job and do your job very well. And another thing I would mention, and I would say to somebody in your position or anyone on this call is come up with like a panel of people that aren't necessarily mentors. I'm not a big fan of like mentors, but more like coaches. You know, if you have somebody who's on a mechanical engineering manager somewhere, that's going to be very helpful. If you have somebody who has an MBA already, they're a director at an engineering firm, certainly that'll be a benefit to you. And then you can learn about things like executive presence, business acumen, technical acumen, you know, stuff like that, right? This is what you need to basically kind of keep on putting that stuff in the backpack and putting more knowledge, putting more experience so then when that position opens up then you're ready right another couple things you can do um like what alexis mentioned there's a number of resources out there on youtube on and all the other stuff she said udemy um lynda.com you know whatever just and, and and you know google's your best friend we all know it's our best friend type in like what you're looking for if you're looking for how to become a manager certainly plethora of resources there's a couple of books out there that I, you know, would, would definitely like tell you to reach out to like, um, how to, I, I forget what it's called, how to make friends or how to like negotiate. Oh, how to make like friends that. and influence people. Right. I actually have that one. It's in my little library. Over yeah. Here. 
So I would say too, another one, just as a suggestion, you guys don't have to do it, but another one would be how Google works. That really talks about the company, but it talks more about an emphasis on how do you manage these awesome, creative, innovative individuals. And again, it kind of leans itself back to management and going to Google, going to Amazon, whatever, obviously I'm a fan of like getting some free stuff. Like I'm not going to pay for every book. Um, you know, right now you can open up a library card and get like all these free audio books or videos or what have you. So definitely take advantage of that. But you know, there's a ton of videos on YouTube. I learned so much just by going on YouTube. Like if there's this person in industry that you certainly respect or is very, very well looked upon, Google them, go on YouTube, check out what they're saying, check out what they're saying about what they look for in an employee, what they do. But to hikes, just to kind of close out to that question, I think you need to learn like based on the company and of joining, like what it takes to, to do that. And then for the folks right now on the, on the call that are like in school, you know, you can certainly be on your like student organization. You can participate by, you know, I always took it upon myself and my group projects, like, Hey, this is what, you know, just kind of take, take control of that. And again, you can speak to that in an interview as a student, you can speak to that as a new grad in your interviews, but I think hike having a plan of, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. And then I want to go to business school. And he's already planning right now. He's an ME major. He has a minor in business. I believe if I heard correctly, and then he kind of has a plan. So if you have a plan, it's always better to, it's always easier to follow. You know, if you don't have a plan, you're not going to know if you've reached that kind of milestone. So, you know, if you don't have a plan, you're like, Hey, things are going good. But it, what if you had a plan, you had like kind of like milestones are you going to hit? Of course, like, you know, get a degree, but where is the PE in that conversation? Are you talking about getting the EIT? Are you going to study for the PE right now while you're in school or during this downtime? You know, that kind of thing is the things that you should guys should be thinking about because it's such a, such a, such a competitive market right now, whether internships, new grads, experienced, um, that, you know, you got to like kind of hustle and you got to like learn additional skills. And at the end of the day, if it's going to help you get a better job or a job or an internship, it's going to help you to be a better well-rounded professional. And you never know where that'll take you, right? Whether it's a different company, a better paying position, an internship that pays, you know, well, I remember getting my first internship and I was getting 16 bucks an hour and I was like, whoa, you know, to a student, I was like, Hey, you know, this is it. This is it right here. Um, so, you know, always just kind of, I, I always really, really like to tell people, like, if you have a plan, you know, when you're on track, you know, when you're off track and you know what you're going towards, but you can always kind of look back and then say like, wow, you know, I become a better speaker. I become a better networker. I become, you know, whatever, but you can kind of like take a look at that and be like, whoa, you know, come a long way. And then onto the next one and onto the next one and onto the next one, et cetera. Um, so yeah, hundred percent. I hope that answers your question. I hope so. Um, but if not, like, give me a ping on LinkedIn or, or what have you. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Freddie. And so Arslan had a question as well, graduating in May um, with a degree in industrial engineering. Um, a lot of companies have stopped responding. I think that we already addressed that. But another question is, I'm interested in working in software in the future. How best is it to break in the field when most of my experience is in manufacturing and in industrial engineering? So again, switching careers essentially at some point is the eventual goal. Any insight on switching into software from industrial and manufacturing? I mean, I think I kind of, we kind of like touched upon it already. Like, do you have any projects that you can showcase? Do you have any, you know, coding repositories that you can share? Um, Cause I'll tell you this, like I, I used to, when I worked at Google, my roommate at the time, he went to the army, he came out, no college degree, nothing. Um, I think he was taking classes at DeVry, but he studied his butt off with coding. And I think he was doing site reliability. So he was more on like SQL database side, right? More like DevOps, if you will. But he studied his butt off. And when he took the assessments like test to get an interview, I think he got a perfect score. And Google was like, we don't, we don't care that you don't have your degree. We don't care that you're going to DeVry. Like the fact that you have those skills is what we're looking for. So if you taught yourself coding school, whatever it might be, um, there's some really good coding schools. Um, Hackbright Academy is a very good one. Um, Outco, I'll type it in here as I go, Outco. 
And Alco in specifically, they have an in-person kind of uh, coding school that kind of is tailored to getting you a job at those tech companies, but they also have an e-learning component. So they've already done it. It's very good. It's very reputable. They help people get jobs at like Google, Facebook, Amazon, et cetera, et cetera. So kind of, again, do some searches of what are some of the academies, uh, coding academies or coding boot camps that are very successful. Um, if I were you, just to kind of think of it from a certain perspective, you know, look at the companies that you're interested in and then cross-reference that with who has gone to a coding academy or who's, you know, if that's something that is you've done or potentially might do, but where did they go? Like, what are the coding academies that consistently get folks into these companies? And, you know, obviously building your own website, adding your portfolio of like, hey, this is my mobile app that I made, you know, just that in itself. Um, is super, super helpful. And obviously right now, like we can't do it in person, but whenever somebody came to an interview uh, and I interviewed all kinds, I interviewed like computer scientists, engineers, whether it's civil, industrial, electrical, mechanical, et cetera, et cetera. Like whenever somebody brought a portfolio or was able to show me like, hey, this is my work and this is what I'm answering with my you know, interview question. That was always like, like it's awesome. And it's something that, again, it's for you and it'll help you, but it'll help you with getting that job, whether internship, you know, interview or what have you. And again, it's not a silver bullet by any means, but you kind of have to like go that extra step and you have to show like, Hey, I've done this coding bootcamp. I've done these certifications from Google or Facebook or Oracle or whatever. Like I've taken the steps to do that. And then I've taken these coding tests and like, you, you know, whatever it might be, but there's certainly different ways to get into tech. Um, these tech companies, I, I'll tell you from experience, don't really care like if you were a CS major. Some do, and some are like, oh, they're missing fundamentals. However, once you take that coding test, and if you do really, really well, you know, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter, you know, depending on the company and the role, but you know, if you can code, like just speaking on that specifically, then that's it, that, you know, as long as you're not, you're somebody who can collaborate, work, learn, like listen, then obviously like, let's go. Like they, you know, companies just really want to know if you can code, right? And obviously having like a solid resume showcasing the stuff that you've done already, like bootcamp, coding repository, uh, my website, you know, whatever it might be. Here's my apps that I've created, you know, whatever it might be. Here are my published papers, you know, whatever. Yeah, that's really great insight. Thank you for- Thank you so much. And then um, Emily mentioned she's interested in transitioning from her internship to a full-time role, currently pursuing her master's in systems engineering. So, I, I mean, I do think we touched on this. It's a matter of speaking to the people, you know, your boss, your boss's boss kind of thing about your intention. But did you have anything you wanted to add to that, Freddie? So the, the person's a current intern? Currently interning and pursuing their master's in systems engineering. Okay, awesome. So I remember when I was an intern, um, and I, again, I would bring this up periodically. Um, I didn't just rely that they would remember. I didn't rely that my manager was like, yeah, he wants to be converted full time, you know, that kind of thing. Um, as an intern, think of it. And just again, this is for the sake of example, right? Whenever I would reach out to anybody, whether it's a manager, somebody who was doing cool work, an executive, whatever. And I said, hi, my name's Rita Rivera. I'm an intern in the, the, Every, like I would say like nine times out of 10, they'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's grab coffee. Let's grab, you know, and then like I learned about stuff like I mentioned before, executive presence, networking, business acumen, technical acumen, like industry knowledge, et cetera, et cetera. So take advantage of being that for the lack of a better word and just for sake of example of being that like cute intern, you know, oh, they're in school, you know, this whole thing. It's always like that. And they always want to talk to you and just kind of talk about like your experience, what you're working on. And if their group or organization just so happens to be something you're interested in, all the more reason to speak to them. Um, I also would recommend like being super, super like, not dressed up, obviously reflect the culture, but you know, just be like on point. And again, I, you know, was just like you guys. I was, you know, eating at Taco Bell in the, in the marketplace, Top Ramen, not saying that you guys are, but that was, that was my life, you know, McDonald's on the way on the 10 freeway off of Grand or whatever it is. Um, so just take advantage of that time where you are an intern and you can like reach out to people and like, you know, how do you, tell me about your career. How did you get to this job? What do you guys do? 
oh, that's really interesting. I would like to do that. Next thing you know, like, hey, talk to Tom. He's my best analyst. You know, you should talk to him. Like, yeah, I should talk to him. And then like, again, you build your network and again, reminding your manager in a respectful way, like, and get to that conversation where it's like, what is it? What do I need to do? Um, what plan do I need to put together or what skills do I need to achieve to convert from an intern to a full-time employee? Um, but obviously it has to be like respectful and not too like overbearing and stuff like that. But, you know, definitely take advantage of that time as an intern where you can have those conversations when you can reach out to those people and, you know, don't be obviously learn like the office, like dynamics and, you know, don't show up to someone's desk, like, Hey, you know, cause that might bother some people depending on the generation they're from. I, I only say that cause I used to do that. I'd be like all creepy. And then I'd be like, Hey, I have a question. Um, so learning like niceties, office niceties and like, uh, the way that the office flows and works and communicates, that's very important as well. But I, I think at the end of the day, I'll just end with this as an intern, when you're an intern working as an intern, you know, dressing like, well, and, and I, to my point earlier, like, you know, I would go to like H and M when stuff was on sale. Uh, Zara, I w I never went into dipped into the closet at on campus, but um, you know, try to get like, you know, solid stuff, whether it's on clearance, sale, you know, offer up, whatever. But you present yourself in a way that you look like, you sound like, and you seem like already an, a full time employee, because if you're operating in that fashion, then they'll be like, well they're already acting, doing all the stuff that they should be doing. They do everything that I ask. They deliver on time. You know, they they ask a lot of questions. They're very present. They're engaged. They're not sleeping in middle of meetings. That did happen to an intern <laughs> when I was an intern. Um, and, you know, don't show up like unprofessional or like disheveled or anything like that, but just act, sound, seem like a professional employee. And that'll go a very long way. Thank you. Thanks so much, Freddie. I mean, we're totally out of time. I do want to ask one last question. And for the people we didn't get to your questions, I'm so sorry. Please feel free to, you know, reach out to me on LinkedIn over email. Um, I know we have a question about like transportation engineering opportunities, whether, you know, you should target specifically smaller companies or larger companies, which ones look better on a resume. Please feel free to reach out. Um, I do want to make sure that that gets addressed. Um, but this one I think has pretty wide applicability. So Paul asked, um, you know, let's say you have a full remote offer. How do you effectively learn the players, the culture, the network, and onboard quickly? So I think this is really timely considering you know, what, what we're going through right now. Yeah, I, I'm actually in a fully remote role since I started with Oracle. And it's been a different change, right? Um, but just ask a lot of questions. You know, I asked my boss, like, hey, who do I need to build a relationship with? Like, just asking that, she was like, oh, actually, I didn't think about that. Well, talk to Alexis, talk to Tom, talk to Jonathan, talk to Matthew. Those are like some of the really good people. And then, you know, so they can kind of give you a running list of maybe who would be a good idea to do that. At the same time, you know, if there's an opportunity to collaborate and partner with individuals that you feel that you need to kind of uh, get to know or anything like that, obviously it has to make sense. That's another way that I would kind of reach out and do that. Um, I set up like Zoom calls with a lot of the folks on my team that I've never met in person and just kind of like, again, fire up the video and get to know them that way whenever possible, you know, that's how that goes a long way. Um, and then just, you know, you're not going to hit the ground running hundred percent of the time with, you know, this is how I work. This is how you work. It's going to work seamless, you know, build that time, take that time to build that rapport, learn their cadence, learn how they work. And then again, they're doing the same with you. So I would definitely do that kind of thing and then be active if possible. Like, you know, we have Zoom meetings. I make it a point. And this is something I learned at Google. It's like a little trick. If, you know, there's like any questions in class, at, you know, in business, anything. If no one's answering their hand, your hand should be popping right up because then they're like, oh, okay, we have a question from, what's your name? Freddie? Oh, I'm an, oh, okay, Freddie, I'm an intern. I work for uh, HR and recruiting. And this is my question. And then now, like, you're out there, you're visible, right? So whether it's on Zoom, in person, you know, just kind of like do that so that you can build relationships, not only in this time, but, you know, since you're remote, that's something that I I'm definitely doing right now. And there's a lot of stuff online, like Google, YouTube, et cetera, that you can kind of take a look at for tips and tricks, you know, things like that. Okay. Appreciate the feedback, Freddie. For sure. For sure, man. 
All right. Awesome. Freddie, thank you so much. That was such a wealth of information. If you want to unmute yourselves for a second, just give Freddie a hand um, or I'm going to do it. <laughs> thank you so much for your insight. It was really thank helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, Thanks for so, everything. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and close this out. Um, I'll stay on the call for a few minutes if we have any last questions. Um, but I know that a lot of you have class, so please feel free to go to that. And thanks again for being here. Do you mind if I uh, add you guys on LinkedIn? Absolutely. Please do add me. Yes. That's All right. Me. Wonderful. Thank you. Right. I could sit on for a few minutes too. If I don't know, I don't know if people have. I forgot. Yeah, right now it's you hour, and then one o'clock. <laughs> yeah, everyone has to go to class. So I'm like, go to class. Go ahead. <laughs> Get out of here. Just yeah. kidding. Um, all right. So actually, Jonathan wrote again. Are there? Oh, I see. Um, yeah, sorry. So if anyone has questions for me or for Freddie, let us know. Um, and then Jonathan did have a question. That was one of the ones he skipped um, about interested in the field of transportation engineering, wondering if there are any internships for recent graduates. And then I responded and said, yes, they're still coming through on Handshake. We're getting lots of posts every day. Um, anyways, you know, despite the circumstances. So I think a lot of it is you can set up job search alerts, whether that's through Google, through Handshake, through LinkedIn, um, and you can specifically target it, you know, saying ones that are posted in the last three days, let's say, so you're sure it's an active recruitment. So that's one of the ways I think I would recommend going about it. Um, Cal Career Government Jobs site, but most are through. Um, you don't have to use Handshake. Handshake's good because you know that people are actively recruiting Cal Poly Blue Honda students, but there are so many job sites. If I went through them, it would be crazy. Like, it's, it's like hundreds. <laughs> um, so you have a lot of options. Yeah. And then, uh, well, Zenep is still on the call. So this was the question about, um, she had asked, I found two internships in Turkey for the summer. One of them is with Mercedes and one of them is a small LPG transportation company called Moonlight Energy Company. I'm more interested in the small company, but do you think it would be better if I do my internship at Mercedes since it's more well known? Or do you think it would be more helpful for me to just try to find an internship in the US? I think this is a, re a really good question in terms of like, do I pick the smaller company or the really well-known company and which one would kind of be better for? Would you consider like I'm, I was international student one. Yes. Yes. Um, so Freddie, did you have any insight on or opinion on just big company, well-known company or a company that sort of feels like a better fit maybe for value reasons or what have you? Um, I mean, when I was looking for internships, I was looking for like big companies, you know, back when I was a student, the big ones were like, it was like Edison, obviously, that's where I ended up, uh, Panda Group, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera, whatever that might be. But I think a bigger company might be better in the long run for your resume for, you know, oh, you worked at Mercedes. Wow. You know, like maybe like another car company or maybe some other industry company will be like, wow, that's, you know and in a different country so that's even like an added bonus right because not only did, were you good enough to join mercedes but you were good enough to you know be transported to a different country and you know provide it all like uh, obviously they're going to provide a few things for you like relocation and stipend and etc so again that kind of speaks volumes to a recruiter but ultimately i think it's what you want to do like the notor the brand name and notoriety and the caliber of professional obviously would be very high, I would assume, given it's Mercedes, but ultimately it's up to you. My thing when I was starting out was I want to work at big companies so they could just like stand out and then, you know, again, go from there. I worked at Edison. I went to Google. Once I went to Google, it was just like, you know, I, at the very least I got a phone call. So again, just kind of give you an example, right? I worked at Google, Amazon, Hulu, Disney, um, target for a couple internships edison so those are like you know pretty well-known names and they kind of stand out like wow you know you've gone to these companies or whatever um so i, I think it just depends on what you want to do and what experience you want to get out of it for sure but either way i think you're fine but just mercedes would like kind of stick out a lot more so again it's up to you and what you want to do okay thank you congrats by the way on the offers yeah that's fantastic I have a question. Sure. Hi. Um, hi, Freddie. Hi, Alexis. Hi. Uh, my name is Maria Mendivar, and I'm a second year chemical engineering student. 
And I got an offer for an internship this for the summer, but it got canceled. So I'm, I started looking for internships. So I'm still in that process again. So I wanted to ask you, how could I, like, I don't have experience. Like I haven't taken any other internships before. So how can I be different or, or get an opportunity in one of the big companies, even though I don't have the experience, how can I stand out from the others? That's my question. What's your target? Like what industry are you going for? So I'm chemical engineering. So I'm more like into uh, like the perfume area and all of that. But I know that it's, they, when, when I read the, per, like the requirements, they're like, oh, you need to have this experience and all this. So I don't know how can I start from not having any to into one of those companies. What, what, uh, uh, what year are you, Maria? I'm sorry. Uh, sophomore. Sophomore, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, I could go since I'm already talking. Um, so essentially, I mean, if I were you, and again, this is just, a, you know, me talking, you know, you don't have to do anything that's said on this call or anything like that, right? So just want to get that out of the way. I think what you can do in the, for the time being, right, you're a sophomore. Um, I think it might be less opportunity. I don't know. Usually, like, companies look at, like, a junior, senior level, right? So yeah. in the case, and, I, you know, sending you good luck vibes that you get another internship, you know, and I'm sorry to hear that that was, you know, taken away. You know, I'm very sorry about that. But in the, in the situation, if you get to the point where you don't get an internship, I would say now or in the summer, whatever you make sense for you, I would really research the companies, like research the heck out of like LinkedIn or whatever that have those positions that you're looking for right now. And then, you know, take the opportunity to reach out to individuals and just kind of like, hey, you know, just kind of talk to them. And if your coursework kind of aligns to what they're doing, great. But if there's things that you figure out that you need to do, that's right now is a perfect opportunity to do that. The other thing I would recommend you do, if, if you haven't done already, like join whatever kind of clubs correspond to your industry yourself, whether it's SHIP, Nesby, SWE. Um, I know there's one for chemical engineering professionals. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm yeah. In the, yeah, I'm in the board right now, so yeah. So, so, okay, so that in itself is you standing apart, right? So you, yeah. I think you need to take inventory of what right now can qualify as that. So being on the board, being in the club stands out already. Okay. And then if you remember as a student, I'm sure they have a certain job board. And to Alexis's point, there's a ton of job boards right now um, that have, you know, whether it's open positions. Like I said, if I were you guys, I would just go on Google and then search for what I'm looking for. Like, internships for international students or something like that type it into like reddit linkedin google whatever makes sense and you know hey i'm looking for these companies so if you know the companies you can figure out who are the recruiters who's the campus recruiter who like etc cetera, etc cetera. so you can kind of do that but again take it a, a, as an opportunity to join some of these other clubs like there's the most random thing that you can even think about like uh iranian women in chemical engineering. And I think the last part I'm making up, I think it's just engineering, but there's an organization out there for almost everybody. So, you know, you're on the board, which is fantastic. You're in the club, which is fantastic. You're taking the time right now as a sophomore to do this. So you're way ahead of the game, I feel. And take this as an opportunity to maybe like build up some skills, whether coding, technical, business acumen, how to yeah. interview, how to write a resume. Um, and figure out as you join these orgs too, what'll happen is you'll start meeting people, whether electronically, email, video, whatever. And as you build a rapport and a relationship, next thing you know, well, Zainab is really like interesting and she's doing all these things. Like we have an opening now, like, let me reach out to her. And that's, you know, again, it's not going to be like hundred percent, but if you put yourself in a position to succeed, you greatly increase your chances, you know, at success. Right. So I would say a combination of that kind of thing and figuring out like, what's going on in the industry is also very important. If you can speak to the, what's going on in industry, like to my example before about Edison, if I heard somebody talking about like smart meters, you know, the, the, the next kind of grid or the future of the grid, you know, stuff like this. And again, quick Google search, hit news, boom, 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 boom. And then like next thing you know, we're having a dialogue conversation and I know Zainab 
And I'm like, where is her resume? Where is that resume? I need it. I want to talk to her, you know? So that kind of is how like some things I would recommend to you. But again, none of those are silver bullet, but I yeah. think they could help you get yourself in a spot that's good. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the advice. <laughs> thank you. Yes. I mean, I don't think I even have anything to add. I think that you know, or you should know how to communicate your value. The fact that you're on the board, that you're taking initiative to be part of those, those leadership activities is really great. And I've had employers reach out to me to say, I consider that like an internship, right? Um, and not everyone feels that way, but there are, you know, high level leadership people um, at companies with CPC alum um, who absolutely value the work that you do. So I think knowing that and how to communicate it will be a really helpful okay. thing. Well, um, one thing that, sorry, one thing that I'll add really quickly, I'm so sorry to cut you off. One thing that I really like, I forgot to stress this earlier. Like I would be all the time in professor office hours you know, mm -hmm. they know, they know alumni, yeah. they know people at companies, they've had students who now work at X companies. And obviously I will kind of say this, <laughs> some professors are nicer than others. Right. And, mm -hmm. you know, we'll kind of go that extra mile. But uh, again, to the, to the point before the worst they can say is no, the worst they can say is like ignore you or just <laughs> whatever. So I would, I've recruited people through professors. I have, like checked on students with professors. Like this is, I'm not joking. And then I've gotten a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of great advice from going to professor office hours. And it kind of works in your favor too, because they see you're putting in extra time, you know? So if you're at like 89.1, that might turn into like a 90 point, you know, and that certainly happened to me. I'm not gonna tell you how many times, but you know, just going that extra mile and just, you know, chopping it up, chatting, learning about them, asking questions, you know, all this thing, you, you learn a lot, but you can also like, Hey, do you know anybody that works at X company? Yeah, I do. I had a couple students. Let me, let me connect you. Like, okay, I will. I will do that. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. Um, Paul asks, since you have a background in HR, how bad does it look to have a one year stint on your resume early in your career? Do big companies care or is it negligible? I'm, I'm so sorry. I was reading the chat. I'm sorry. No, it's totally fine. So Paul asks, since you have a background in HR, so I think this is directed at you. Um, how bad does it look to have a one year stint on your resume early in your career? Do big companies care or is it negligible? Uh, if you have a good reason for it, it's negligible, but don't take it as an opportunity to be like, I hated my boss. My boss like hated me. You know, don't do that at all. Um, I'll give you an example of what I said, because I've had that when I was doing some contracts and I just said, Hey, you know what? You know, I gave it a shot. They wanted me full time. I wanted to do a contract to try it myself. And after being there for X time, like, you know, it just wasn't for me. I didn't really jive with the culture, the work, you know, whatever. If you have a good reason for something like, like that, don't worry about it. And if they are like, ma, it's a year, move on, just go to the next company because there's nothing you can do. And at the end of the day, you have to take care of yourself. And if you're not agreeing with like a certain role, company, whatever, then you got to do what's best for yourself. Right. And if the interview or a company doesn't appreciate that, then, you know, it's best to move on. But I've been certainly asked that a number of times and I have said stuff along those lines and I've never, I've never had a problem. Yeah. I think so much of it is in the framing and I'm so sorry. There's like, lawn mowing going on in my for my HOA I think so sorry about the extra noise but yeah I think that it's being tactful um in why you left self-made millennial on YouTube has a lot of really great videos and one of the interview questions that she addresses and gives an example for is why did you leave your current position or why are you leaving your current position um and so especially if it's a short time frame she has a lot of really tactful ways to approach that so um, I recommend checking that out, Self-Made Millennial on YouTube. And she has, you know, all these interview questions and things that I think would be helpful for you, Paul. Um, and I think that's about it. I'm not seeing any uh, more questions. I have a question. Oh, sure. Okay, sorry. Hey. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, so my question is kind of like with the similar theme is that uh, right now um, I had two possible interviews that got canceled because of the whole situation. And so my at my current internship, they are going to offer me a full-time position, but I am someone that is interested in automation, but, uh, but at my current, uh, internship, it's, uh, industrial automation. And I'm more interested in like 
automation, like with vehicles, kind of like my dream job will be either BMW or Disney. <laughs> I don't know. So is like, my question is like, a lot of people say uh, you need to stay like two to three years in your job to see that you're not jumping around. But like, is it like a year or something acceptable? I'm, I'm still gonna, I'm still like gonna learn, but I'm saying like, I don't know. The whole situation spun out and the, the company that I wanted, it's putting things off. Yeah, so I don't know if it makes sense. I mean, what I've heard from employers is a year and a half is sort of the professional standard for how long you want to aim to stay at a job since they're investing in training you and all of that. And so if you can stay for a year and a half, I think that will you know enable you to leave on good terms. But I think the more critical thing almost is making sure that every position you have, you add as much value as you possibly can. So be a high performer, be someone with high potential, um, let your goals be known. And I think people will cheer for you, hopefully, right? As they see this person's added a ton of value in the short amount of time they were here. And I'm happy for them, right? I think that's the goal is to just be that high performer and to have that reputation so that it's less so about, you know, how long you were there and more so about, you know, they left a legacy of doing really excellent work and I'm glad they were on our team, right? Okay. Um, so that's sort of my feedback. I don't know if Freddie has anything else to add, but um, I would also say like at this time, I don't know. I mean, you, you do want to think about like if you have an offer and it's very hard right now to get an offer, like let's say, um, you know, weighing that. I think that's a really reasonable thing to do at the end of the day, right? You have bills to pay and obviously it must have been a fit to a certain degree right because you're an intern now so um so you know better than I do if, if it's kind of working for you but uh, yeah it's a little bit of a fit because it's a uh, it's automation but it's industrial and the type of automation I just want to do like more like autonomous automation which is more with vehicles and all that stuff so it's a little bit of a fit I'm still going to learn some stuff but it's I, it was kind of like, it wasn't my first pick, I guess. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it's a stepping stone, right? I think you kind of talked about that, Carlos. So, you know, leverage that opportunity. And I'm, I'm more than sure that you're going to still learn some things. And then next summer, hopefully, you know, we're, we're, you know, somewhat of a semblance of normal. You know, when you're applying, you already have automation experience. So it'll kind of improve your chances of getting that kind of internship or job that you're talking about, which is more with, you know, automated vehicles and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I'd recommend to you is whoever you've been communicating with thus far from the company that you really like that, you know, didn't work out because of what's going on, mm -hmm. like drop them a note, like once every two months, once every three months, mm -hmm. you know, obviously when it makes sense if in the summer, Hey, I'm playing call of duty, you know, mm -hmm. you know, this, that, or the other, don't do that. But yeah. when school turns, like, Hey, you know, just wanted to thank you guys for the opportunity of, you know, do that now. And then in the future, like, Hey, I'm taking these classes, wondering if you guys are like going to start recruiting for interns. And if so, when, because you've already been extended an offer. So if the role completely changed, then more than likely they'll be like, okay, Carlos now has automation experience in a different vertical in a different industry. However, we were going to hire him before, but because he's kind of top of mind, then it's a no brainer to like, why would you restart the process of finding this intern when you've already found the person and just that the situation dictated to like stop all offers or whatever, whatever company like was doing. But mm -hmm. if I were you, I would drop them a line, you know, when it makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, like every two months, every three months, like, Hey, here's my coding repository. This is what I'm working on. This is what I'm learning. Do you have any like tips or something like that? Hey, it's, I'm taking these classes. This is what I'm working on. Here's a video of my robot that I made that I automated using a, a you know, microcontroller and whatever, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, it could be like, it, it could be like very like, I don't want to do that. I'm embarrassed. I don't want to bother them. Like, dude, you know, unless they say like, Hey, stop sending me this. Like <laughs> they'll probably just say something like, Hey, this is really cool. Let's stay in touch. You know, they'll probably just yeah. end up saying something like that. So, but, but you're, you know, reminding them like, Hey, I'm right here. You know, hey, I wrapped up my internship in automation, like, you know, just letting you know I'm still interested, you know, so. Yeah. Okay. No, sounds, sounds good. Like, I actually have a, uh, what is it called? My portfolio. So I'm trying to see how to, like, make it digital for yeah. everyone to see. There you go. Yeah, that's a really good idea, especially if we're doing virtual interviews. And it's just helpful to have anyways. 
uh, as many ways you can communicate what you've done. Um, uh, very last question, I think, from Tuan. If I can't find an internship before my graduation, is that a barrier for looking for a job? I mean, I would say whatever kinds of involvement you can have, whether that's volunteering, whether that's um, an internship, whether that's a club activity, it's you trying to get your resume, you know, to be that impressive, you know, piece of marketing material for yourself. So, um, of course, internships are helpful, um, and I think you already know that. I think that that's a really important and critical piece in what employers look for. But, yeah, I think in light of the circumstances, it's a matter of finding other ways to, to build your resume. Um, that's my opinion. So, okay. All right. Freddie, thank you so much. Really happy to have you. Um, thank you everyone for being here. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Stay safe and you know how to connect with both of us later on. Bye guys. Thanks. Bye. Good luck. Stay safe. All right. Thanks, Freddie. And I'll send, um, I'll send this to you too as soon as I get the recording downloaded. Okay. Sounds good.